what is going on guys and welcome back to another video my name is jeremy and this is jeremy's wild world based on for today's title today's video is going to be another show video yes two weeks two shows in a row absolutely awesome now this one is the aes also known as the amateur entomological society show now this is a little bit different than your typical invert show where it's more focused on obviously entomology um, so that means pinned insects and books and stuff like that so definitely going to be a lot different than your typical invert show but i'm really really excited to check it out and you know it's my first time going to one um just it'll be nice to see the difference um uh, livestock wise and what they have available basically at the shows so i'm going to show you the clips i managed to get as well as the pickups i get at today's show so before i get into today's video guys i just want to quickly say that according to my youtube statistics a lot of you guys who watch my videos aren't subscribed so if you enjoyed today's video and you want to see more click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell down below so you guys do miss out on future content now without further ado let's get into showing you the clips of what i got at the show Oh, so I just got home from the show. What an absolutely fantastic day out. Now, it was my very first time at a proper entomological show rather than an invert show. I uh, had a really, really good time seeing all the different kinds of pin stuff. There was a lot of variety there. That bat was really, really funky. I can't believe I saw a pinned bat at an entomological show. <laughs> really, really cool stuff. Um, what I liked about this one is that there was a lot of different types of stick insects, so phasmids and stuff like that, and your Leoptera, which are like your butterflies and moths, so complete different kinds of varieties. As you saw, those gold chrysalises, I've never seen them in person before. I've only ever seen them in pictures. So that was really, really cool to see. Um, livestock, there wasn't a lot, um, of course, uh, being a purely entomological show. There was a few livestock sellers, so I did get a few different bits uh, that I will be showing you shortly. And I mostly went there for dry stock. Unfortunately, there was no cork bark really. Um, the sizes that I did want were like medium to large pieces. Unfortunately, there wasn't many there or anything at all really. They're just small pieces. Um, but yeah, so let's stop the chit chat and we'll move on to what I got at today's show. So as always with my show videos, guys, I like to start off by showing you what dry stock I got at the show. Now with this show, as you know from last week, I did go to the Bedford Show and go really heavy on livestock. Um, I did want to go for the dry stock this time around, mainly cork bark. But as I said in the last clip, unfortunately there was no good deals on cork bark, uh, more the deals on stuff I wanted, which was like medium to large pieces. Uh, but never mind, I did get what else I was looking for. Uh, so let's get into that right now. So starting off with a couple bags of this absolutely gorgeous forest floor moss. Now, all majority of the stuff did come from a gentleman, I can't remember the name, uh, but they did uh, three four pound bags for a tenner. So I did uh, seven bags of stuff from him today. Uh, so as you can see here, forest floor moss, really, really nice stuff. Um, I like to use more natural stuff. And uh, as you can see, some of it's dried out, so I rehydrate it. And this will also be great for like my millipedes as well. Uh, like my candy pills, uh, they will like to snack on this stuff. So I will obviously be using that in their enclosures. So that's two bags of the forest floor moss. Uh, next up, I got 
three bags of this dried birch leaves, as you can see right here, which do smell amazing, I might I add. These do smell really, really nice. And as you can see, they are green leaves and these are naturally dried. These aren't oven baked. So this is great stuff. I will be using this as leaf litter for my detritus inverts, of course. So I've got three bags of that. I also got from him uh, two bags of rotting oak wood. Now this stuff is fantastic because it's super, well, I'd say super brittle, but these bigger pieces obviously be need, be need to be snapped more. As you can see, um, it does break apart quite easily. Uh, so I will be also using these in my Detrivus Inverts um, enclosures as well. So I've got two bags of those. And then the last thing I got from this gentleman was some insect jelly pots. He did a bag of 50 to 15 pounds, an absolute bargain, uh, because typically with these jelly pots, you'll see in the reptile shops, so they'll go for about a pound a piece. So 15 pounds for 50, you, you just can't go wrong, can you? Uh, so yes, yeah, so I got a bunch of insect jellies. And then for the last bit of dry stock, I did get a couple of these. So these came from Curtis Lankin. Um, as you see, this is a uh, tufa calcite. So I was quite curious um, and I asked him what this stuff actually is. And he said that it's basically a calcified mineral um, that isopods that are mostly cave, dwell uh, cave dwelling isopods like to snack on. So I decided to grab a tub and he threw an extra tub for free. So thank you very much, Curtis, um, for that, if you are watching. Uh, so I will be incorporating this as a natural hide as well as something for uh, the isopods to chew on. Um, I will obviously be trying these with my Cubaris because as you guys know, Cubaris do come from caves. Uh, but I will be chucking this stuff mostly in other isopod enclosures as well and see how they enjoy it. So that's pretty much the dry stock that I got today, guys. Um, really, really good stuff. Great deals on the moss and everything like that. And then obviously the added tub of this uh, calcite stuff along with it so now we can move on to the livestock stuff swiftly moving on to the livestock part of today's video yours and probably my favorite part of making these invert show videos is what livestock i picked up at the show so as i did mention i did not intend to buy many things um, i don't think i bought too many you guys can be the judge of that um, but i did get quite a nice variety of stuff today uh, but before I show you them, I just wanted to show you a pinned invert that I got today. Now, how can you go to an entomological show and not pick up anything pinned? Now, I do want to say I wanted to buy a sex pair of Goliathus Goliathus pinned in the frame. It looked absolutely beautiful, but it was so expensive. It was like 90 odd pounds. And I just I couldn't justify buying that at the moment. Um, so I passed on it for now. But I did get this little cute thing. As you can see right here, a blue bee. Like, check it out. Look how cute it is. Like that blue. Yes, guys, this is just lighting no editing whatsoever in regards to the color just um some lighting for my phone how gorgeous is this and it was only three pounds and i just remember seeing these blue bees well not specifically this one probably um, when i was a kid i remember seeing these and i just thought like there's no way out of that obviously you've seen the bumblebees we have here they're black and yellow and white but to see a blue one on the tv for the very first time was just mesmerizing and to have one for such a cheap price, three pounds, I couldn't pass it up. Um, so I plan on putting this in a little frame and hopefully we'll be displaying it within my room or in a little bug area that I'll set up, hopefully a shed um, and stuff like that. So hopefully I'll have a bunch of pinned inverts um, eventually. Might give a go at pinning my own stuff at some point, but we shall see. But yeah, check it out, really, really pretty. Now we can move on to the livestock stuff. Now I did do one pre-order today, uh, once again from the insect farm, I got some beetle larvae and here they are right here so as you can see the scientific name i'm not even gonna bother trying to pronounce most of it but they are the cs cyanochlora which are absolutely gorgeous if you haven't seen them before their common name is the blue sapphire beetle definitely look them up because they are really really gorgeous um so yes yeah, so i got five l1 slash l2s for not 35 i did get a discounted price because they were pre-ordered um they were about i think 31 30 pounds um so really really good deal in regards to these and let's just have a look and see if i can find any larvae and there's one right there so they are a decent size at the moment and they are small enough that i can keep them in here for now and then when i get bigger i will start to separate them so they can pupate properly but yeah so absolutely absolute bargain for these beetle grubs and again thank you insect farm for these and i definitely will be pre-ordering more stuff from you in the future so i'll just pop that to the side now as i did mention um in the dry stock stuff i did get some live inverts from curtis lankin so i will be starting off by showing you an absolute bargain of a roach colony 
as you can see right here, these are the banana roaches or the scientific name of the Panclora Nivea. Got 30 of these and you wouldn't believe the price, eight pounds for 30. And that's probably more, he said, than 30. Uh, but yeah, really, really good deal. And you can see a female right here, really, really good example of one. Um, they also commonly call these the green banana roaches. Uh, there's a nymph right there, a little bit brown, uh, boring brown, but as you can see, they do mature out into really, really pretty roaches. So 30 of these for eight pounds, really, really good deal. Now I did get some other roaches from him as well. And these, well, they are actually a green one, but these I like a little bit more. The Emerald Roaches, the P Magnifica, absolutely fantastic. I did get six of these and they're quite a good size as well. They're not super tiny, um, but they're not really, really big as well. So chances are with the other Emerald Roaches I got today, I'll show you those in a little bit. I will have a really good colony and we'll be able to breed these because I did have these before, but unfortunately they were pretty much all a male. I did have one female, but she died before she matured, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, so fingers crossed, I will be able to get a breeding colony of these P. Magnifica. Now, the last thing I got from Curtis was some isopods. Now these, I was not expecting to see today either, um, but really, really good price and I couldn't pass it up when I saw them. Um, but yes, yeah, because these are definitely one of my favorites. And as you can see right here, they are the Porcelio Wannerai for £35, an absolute bargain. These are very, very seldom seen, and when they are for sale, they're usually about 50 odd pounds, maybe more. But I got a colony of 10 of well, these absolutely gorgeous isopods for £35. Just check them out, guys. They just look like trilobites, um, ancient sea creatures. Um, but as you can see, they are really, really gorgeous. Really, really flat as well in regards to an isopod. Um, but yeah, so I got 10 of these guys. Hopefully I can breed them with some help of Curtis. He gave me some advice in regards to these. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed I will be able to get these bred. Because um, I haven't had much luck with Spanish isopods, uh, the larger ones. But with the advice, of course, hopefully I'll have some success with these. So that's the stuff that I got from Curtis. And yes, I am putting these all in one clip because that's just proving I didn't get a lot. <laughs> Um, let's move on to the spy shop. Uh, I did actually want to go to the spy shop originally for cork bark mostly, uh, but they did have a couple spiders there. Um, as I said, they didn't have any cork bark, unfortunately, but never mind. Uh, so I did pick up a couple more Huntsmans, um, starting off with a gorgeous Hedgepoda Giovanna. Now, yes, I did just get 15 slings of these, but what makes this one special is that she has an egg sac. So here she is, absolutely gorgeous, has an egg sac, fingers crossed it's fertile, and then I will be able to uh, pair up these slings with the um, the Giovannis I already have, and hopefully get some pairs from them. Um, but yeah, so that's what made me decide to get her, and for £15 with an egg sac, you just can't go wrong. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, the other sporacid that I did get was the Ganoplasties Kochi, as you can see right here, really, really good size female, thumb size, um, no males, unfortunately, um, so I'm just hoping that this girl is gravid because her abdomen's pretty big and she was the biggest one on the table at the time of me looking. So fingers crossed um, she is gravid too. And then now this spider was something I was not expecting to see today. Absolutely gorgeous species of tarantula. Yes, it is a tarantula and it's one of my favorite brachypalmas of all time. And now I have all three of my favorites and that being the brachypalma classy female. Whoa, I just couldn't believe it when I saw it. I was just like, wow, I could not pass it up and grabbed her straight away. Um, just a really, really good price as well. 70 pounds. Females of the classy, usually about 100 plus. I've seen some adult females go for like 200. So to have a female juvenile for 70 pounds is an absolute bargain. I have now all three of my favorite Brachypelmas, which is the Brachypelma Bomai, the Brachypelma Albiceps, and now the Brachypelma Classy. So I'm a very, very happy guy right now really really gorgeous i will obviously try to get some macro shots of her and hopefully get some fresh malt colorations when she does malt but she doesn't look like she's going to malt for a little while now uh, but yeah so she's absolutely gorgeous thank you again to spider shop always hooking me up with good deals um but yeah so i got those now i did also get some more emerald roaches this time coming from uh john loach from loach's roaches 
as you can see i did get eight of these uh, for 30 pounds now you're probably wondering jeremy why don't you not just get two for 20 pound two 20 pound cultures from curtis but for me i wanted to make sure i had some good bloodlines um so i decided to grab some from john and some from curtis just so i have two different bloodlines in the starting culture and then i can always add more in the future but yeah so they're average size as well um so hopefully they'll all mature out at the same time and they'll get some good ratios uh, males to females and then john also threw out a free sample of his uh, detrivore mix as well i think he called this like woodland substrate or stuff something like that uh, but yeah essentially it's just the um like a detrivore uh, substrate with uh soil and leaf mulch and stuff like that um but yeah so more emerald roaches really really exciting stuff now the last roach species i got today was something i did buy at the bedford show which is the Sin sinmandoa concifarium concifarium uh, so i got six small nymphs 14 pounds and again this is just to add um, fresh blood into my current culture of the extinct cave roach i uh, don't know if i can find any of these guys right now I'll dig around and see if i can find some for you uh they did say they were smaller nymphs oh there's oh there's a few right there oh yeah these are pretty good size i never did show off the nymphs so these are absolutely stunning and you did see the adult in my Bedfordshire video. And if you haven't watched that video, definitely do check it out. Um, but yeah, so six small nymphs of the Sinmandoa. Uh, can't go wrong, the extinct cave roach. Uh, fresh genes in my uh, colony now. And now last but not least was something that I've never worked with before and didn't really think of working with until today. Um, absolute bargain for these. Now, here it is, a white box. <laughs> I'm joking, guys. I'll just crack the box open and show you guys what i got i'll just take off the cotton right here and you're probably wondering jeremy what the heck are these you said this was the livestock pickups and don't worry it is the livestock pickups these are atlas moth cocoons now i did get a breeding group of three females and one male i'll see if i can just grab a cocoon for you and open it up inside but if you guys haven't seen the atlas moth before they are one of the, I think they are the largest moth in the world. You can see the cocoon just in there. Um, but I'm hoping I can breed these. Uh, because what really inspired me to get these guys is the fact that um, the people who were selling moths had a really, really cool display um, with the food plant um, sticking out and just having the caterpillars on there. And I think it will make a fantastic display piece um, when I do the tables and stuff like that. So fingers crossed, I will have some uh, caterpillars ready for the Brighton show. Uh, it's looking more and more that I will be vending there. Um, so hopefully, because these uh, caterpillars are super cool, they're white and they're spiky, um, I will have them ready for the Brighton show just to have them on display, maybe sell a few depending on how many I get. Um, but yeah, so that's the end of today's pickups, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, let's get into the outro of today. So that is the end of today's video, guys. What do you think? Although this was a little bit smaller than the previous AES shows, as I've been told by other people, I think I had a really, really good time. You know, it was quite nice to see a different variety of stock than other than your tarantulas and stuff like that. It was quite nice to see a variety of phasmids and uh, Leoptera. Um, of course, I got those Atlas moths, so it's really, really exciting. And fingers crossed I'll be able to breed those, as well as all the other pickups today. Uh, Livestock-wise, was really, really exciting stuff. And I'm really happy with that um, forest floor moss. I am recording this outro a couple of days later after the show. I have incorporated that moss within my enclosures, and I think it absolutely looks amazing. And uh, I have put it in with my pill millipedes I got at Bedford and i also put them in with some pink dragon millipedes and they're loving it chewing on it and everything um so yeah really really enjoying that stuff and yeah so about the show um really really cool again seeing all the different kinds of inverts that typically aren't seen at the invert shows uk shows and the bts and stuff like that as well as all the um the literature so the books and stuff like that and all the different kinds of pin inverts if i go next year i'm 100 going to buy a really really nice frame invert piece uh possibly a goliathus well maybe i'll start saving for that uh but yeah so i had a really really good time and definitely will be going again next year hopefully next year there will be more sellers um, because obviously this is the first one back after a few years and yeah so that's the end of today's video guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did i really appreciate it. if you would click that subscribe button the notification bell down below so you guys don't miss out on future content i'd also really appreciate if you guys were following me on instagram jeremy's wild world as well as jeremy's wild world sales i'm really active on instagram posting pictures and videos of the animals and invites i keep when i don't upload on youtube so that's all for me today guys leave a like leave a comment and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye <laughs>